On the night of March 20th, 1993, Claire Wibson was pushing her shopping trolley along the Newell Highway when she stepped out onto the road into the path of an oncoming truck. But was it an accident? The driver described her last moments as having her arms outstretched with a look of manic glee on her face. This is the story of one of Australia's most famously renowned highway apparitions, and we're going to explore how Claire would transition from someone widely regarded as creepy when alive and her ability to maintain this reputation even after her death. This story is a reflection of the countless reports made by locals and truckers, some of whom describe the area this story takes place in as being particularly freaky, as demonstrated by the many locals who choose to stay indoors at night. It is a place known for being so dark and spooky that it has been named the astronomy capital of Australia. The Pilliga Scrub is an expansive area of 5,000 square kilometres or 3,100 square miles made up of dense semi-arid woodland located inland of northern New South Wales. This forest has a reputation for being the most spine-chilling area of wilderness in Australia, with a long history of unexplained disappearances involving sheep and cattle, vehicles and even people. It is frequently traversed by long-distance truck drivers along the intersecting Newell Highway at all hours of the day and night. But there's something in the Pilliga that passing travellers continue to find unnerving. And once they enter, truck drivers refuse to stop. They just keep going until they reach the other side. This is more than just an urban legend transmitted over the radio waves of truckies or quietly discussed over all day breakfasts in some late night remote truck stop cafeteria. The truckies are not alone in their concerns. Aboriginals from this region have long-standing beliefs passed down within their culture that the air is cursed and to be avoided. It is just considered to be a really bad place to be even among locals and especially all on your own in the dark of night. This collective fear among some of Australia's tough men stems from an abundance of stories over the years, combined with personal experiences that something is just not right within that section of the Australian outback. Is there any truth to it? Well, numerous stories over many years by truckers, locals and passing tourists suggest there might be more to this area than pranksters, hoaxes and people being mistaken for what they believe they have seen. Examples of these strange incidents include encounters with Yowies, which are comparative to the Bigfoot or Yeti, that have reportedly terrified truck drivers who have unknowingly pulled over in one of the designated rest areas, only to be woken from their exhausted sleep to hear the earth-shattering roar of some mysterious beast and their trucks being shaken and violently pulled apart, leaving behind huge hand and footprints. Hunters also report strange findings out in the scrub, such as dead kangaroos being found high up in the hollows of trees with no explainable way of getting there, concealed by bark covers as if in some sort of meat locker. Yet there are no known predators to behave in such a way. But often, especially at night, the hunters describe the sounds of the bush as being unusually quiet and still, with the silence only being broken by the occasional roar of the fumorous bandersnatch. Then there are the phantoms of the Pilliga, strange sightings of apparitions dressed in 1900s period clothing with some projecting frightening noises in the still night air that can only be described as moaning, crying and screaming with the good old chains rattling. But on occasion, these sounds can become more lighthearted and to be heard as whistling and singing. The most renowned phantom of the Pilliga is Claire Wibson, the lady who was tragically killed by an oncoming truck in the middle of the night. Since that fateful night, she's reportedly been seen by countless people traveling along the Newell Highway upholding her reputation for being unnerving in life as well as in death, known as the Pilliga Princess for her slender body and flowing white hair. Claire was what many people would envisage under the definition of a bag lady. Reclusive, dishevelled, not smelling the best, and described as crazy by locals who mysteriously moved about the place on her own with an enigmatic past that people would often contemplate with wide-ranging speculation. Some locals claimed she had been married to a wealthy man who outcast her, while others said her husband had died in a fire and she was left behind with several daughters. She lived alone in a camp located in a dry creek bed within the depths of the Pilliga scrub. She was well known in the area for many years to travel along the highway, often in complete darkness, either walking or hitchhiking between the towns of Narrabri and Coonabarabran, which were located to the northern and southern edges of the Pilliga scrub respectively. She was a unique character of the outback to truck drivers, but not for being great company when providing her a ride. In fact, she would come across as being a little scary. One particular truck driver familiar with the Pilliga Princess said that he never used to lock his truck door when taking a rest in the back at night, except when close to the Pilliga. He claimed Claire was known to open the doors of trucks parked at the rest stops, waking the sleeping truckers and demanding to be driven back to her camp in the remote depths of the Pilliga. One night in 1993, 
The Pilga princess was hit and killed by a truck. The truck driver who hit her said she had wandered out onto the road and he hadn't seen her until it was too late. In the investigation, he would describe how she was lit by the headlights and then she turned to look directly at him and ran towards his truck with her arms outstretched. The last thing he saw of her alive was her white hair flaring out around her wild-eyed face and the expression was one of manic glee. But the sightings of the Pilga princess didn't end with her death. Since then, other truckers swear they have seen her walking her shopping trolley along the road just as she had done for years before she was killed, at times even jumping out in front of trucks only to suddenly vanish. She was easily identified for wearing a red fishing hat, pulled down to eye level and dressed in a World War I overcoat. One truck driver even claimed to have hit a trolley, but when he got out to investigate the apparent accident, he couldn't find anyone in sight. You could only imagine how concerning this would be for a driver new to the trucking industry, one on their first few runs and yet to learn about the strange occurrences in this part of the country. Do you believe this story is true? What we do know is that this land is reportedly cursed in Aboriginal culture and there have been numerous accounts of Yowies or Bigfoots behaving menacingly towards those that come to the Pilliga and there is also a solid paranormal reputation that continues to be experienced. Perhaps one explanation is that the Pilliga princess bought into this vibe of high strangeness during her years of solitude living camped in the Pilliga only to willfully give up life to become a part of this foreboding forest. Maybe these strange reports are in some way connected, or perhaps there is a much simpler explanation. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Don't pick up old hitchhiking ladies on lonely highways, and I'll see you next time.